This is Charlene O'Banion, a prison officer being accused of sleeping with an inmate. He felt me, I was like stuffing through my clothes. After oh. hearing rumors from other officers that had seen her and Jason Parker together, an investigation was opened up. Charlene thinks she flew under the radar and got away, but what she doesn't know is that the detectives have all the evidence they need, and they're about to expose and embarrass her in the most brutal way possible. You gotta lie to that your head game. <laughs> Oh, my God. Right from the start, Charlene plays innocent and pretends she doesn't know anything about the allegations. We're notified of a possible improper relationship between you and uh, Jacob Parker. So we're here for that. I just kind of want to talk to you about it and get your side of that story. I don't know. Have you talked to him on any jail phone calls or anything like that? Uh, no. None at all? Charlene is sure that this will work, but the detectives have much more evidence than they're letting on. And where would you think that this allegation would come from if there's nothing to it? Um, well, I had a feeling this was coming. So there was an inmate um, named Coker, Justin Coker. Okay. He got out of here for, I don't know, what period of time. And he tried to contact me on Facebook. He sent me a message and I blocked him on Facebook. And um, I guess one time Parker was going back to be quiet to use the bathroom and he was talking like at the window with me. Mm -hmm. And I guess Coker like didn't like that, which I had no contact with him or anything. And um, Parker had told me that he had gone up to him and was like, don't talk to her or something crazy like that. So uh, I'm just not trying to be rude here. I'm just, yeah. Why would you expect? this conversation to come up from that like now if that happened a few months ago Charlene claims that the only time she's had contact with Jason was a single time outside the jail bathroom and it was a jealous inmate that started the rumor but the detective is about to share some evidence that instantly proves that Charlene is hiding something bruh you low-key a cop you work in there I ain't never been to prison, but I know that they be recording them phone calls. Secondly, <laughs> if the investigators got you in the office like that, they already got proof. She so goddamn dickmatized. It's telling you, sometimes that wood, boy, that toxic wood would do it to you. Pause. Pause. Because I think... I got successful wood. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. My wife is very successful, and I feel I, I attribute a lot of that to her hard work. But, you know, she gets some of that good wood every once in a while. I don't know exactly where how it started, like who it started from. Um, but I was told that it was brought to somebody's attention, and then we looked at jail calls. And there was jail calls between you and Parker. And all that stuff's recorded. So... I don't think you're being completely truthful. Well, I, I kind of know that you're not. And I'm not trying to be rude when I say that. Yeah, no. um, I'm just kind of trying to lay it out on the table for you. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of tell me what's going on? Um, I guess a few years ago, we we talked, and then I ended up here, and then he ended up here. I didn't know he was here. I didn't, like, it wasn't anything like that. Um. Apparently, Charlene and Jason knew each other before prison and messed around before they both ended up here. This led to them joking around with each other here, but nothing else. Or at least, that's what she claims. In reality, the cops have recorded phone calls from inside the prison that tell a completely different story. So what about some of these phone conversations? Um... No, no, not here or the phone. I thought no, I just mean the conversation you are having on the phone. No, no. Since he's been in here. Yeah. Like, like, sexual? Well, not, I'm not saying having phone sex, talking about sexual acts. My, from what I'm listening to on the calls, I take it as that you've given him oral sex at some point, is what no, I gather from these calls. No, that was, like, in the world. But we never, like... That was in the world? Did. We just... Okay. What kind of conversations have you had with him since... You started working here and he's been in the jail. <sighs> talking about what would happen after he got out. And then the jail call recordings. Have you been talking to him like while you're at home? Like he calls you from the jail while you're at home? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Just 15 minutes into this interrogation, Charlene's original story is seeming less and less like the truth. She's been caught in multiple lies, admitted to having sexual relations with Jason in the past, and calling him regularly from her own home. The Bro, I can see how stuff like this can happen because from my from my recollection, you know, I had friends who worked in the prison system. You basically like one of the prisoners. Like you you're always there. You're always there. So of course, just how some of these dudes be gay for the stay, hey man, she in there with these image, man. She's a female. It can't happen. Like shit, look at how many of these these female inmates whose mugshots be going viral. A lot of these joints be bad. Like, I wouldn't do it to myself, bro. If I worked in a in a prison, a woman's prison, yeah, man, I'm I'm knocking something down, bro. I don't care. Y'all could judge me. I'm knocking something down because some of you. Be This is highly irregular behavior for a prison officer, and it doesn't take a genius to realize something deeper may be going on. But the detective has some more questions pertaining to some more physical evidence. I haven't listened to this, but apparently there may be some talk in the calls about, what, photographs? Have you given him any photographs? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't lie. I gave him a photograph of his mom. Oh, Lord have, have mercy. Okay. She digging a deeper hole for herself. Hmm. Stop lying. Yeah, cause... Some of the things we're going to be doing is like looking at cameras and stuff too. Has there been any times where y'all were alone? Hmm. Or you go out of camera view or anything like that? Anything that's going to look suspicious that way? I don't think so. It's important to remember that Charlene has worked at this prison for a while now. And as such, we'll know all the ins and outs of everything such as security camera blind spots and patrol officer schedules. You'd think that with all this knowledge, it'd be easy to hide a relationship with an inmate. But it seems that she forgot about a few vital pieces of information. Not least the facts that all phone calls placed from the prison are recorded. But thanks to the detectives, she's about to be reminded of this fact in a devastating way. Oh, Lord. Goodbye. Baby, guess what? Mm -hmm. I just won the blackjack game. <laughs> Yay. I just won thirty dollars. I got a lot of stuff to clean and get rid of before you come home. <laughs> yeah. I'm just working with you. I'm just trying to make you think I have all these secrets in me. Yeah, I bet you do. What? 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 I don't know. You probably got this weird sex swing hanging from the ceiling. Candace probably thinks it's a swing set. Oh, if I had that sex swing, you better believe I'd leave that sucker up for you. Would you really? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah. With a gag bar and everything? A gag bar? What the hell is a gag bar? <laughs> Nothing. Listening to your own voice can be bad enough for some people, but listening to your own sexual phone calls in silence with two detectives in the room as you realize you've just been caught red-handed has got to be worse than any prison sentence there is. However, with the language they've used so far, there's no evidence that the pair have actually engaged in any sexual acts. But that changes quickly as Jason begins to directly incriminate Charlene on the call. Mm. I just want you to look at me sometimes and be like, damn, my woman's fine. Fine is why. Mm -hmm. And you got a, a lot of that fucking head game. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't my best moment. I was just trying to get it done. Me, me. Are you in bed? Don't you? Yeah, me think about that because that makes me so horny. Like just going back and thinking about yeah. that. Yeah. I guess you're horny. Oh yeah. Uh, I was like soaking through my clothes. Get she very was horny soaking dirty. through her clothes. I don't want to have that. Like that's not even. Not good. I mean, it's not like I just like look at someone. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so fucking horny. No, like of course, like I only get horny for you. You can't see how that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> He said you can see how that sounds. The audacity she if has said to no? say no after hearing that phone call is truly remarkable. But to her credit, 
she's not going down easily. The detectives try asking her if she thinks Jason would cover for her, and she still doesn't break, sticking to her story that everything that happened happened outside of prison. Technically, this story could still be true with this phone call, but it definitely is odd for the couple to be recounting events from over three years ago in such detail, especially when earlier she struggled to remember any details about their relationship. You talk about how profound this was. Like this giving them this blowjob was, but you like don't remember anything <laughs> about anything about it. It's, it's like uh, telling me something, but you're having trouble coming up with details. But you know what I mean? Like if it's that profound. I mean, I gave him a blowjob. How, how do you ex describe the blowjob? I mean, is that? Well, I want to know like about the blowjob. Gave job. him a profound I mean, blowjob, baby this girl. This is a he sexual just thing that happened three years ago. I feel like he would kind of remember some stuff about it. Like I yeah, feel I like, mean, like we said in the car, we, you know. Like when I asked you who was there. Him, of course, like when you all met or whatever. And then when I asked, like, who else? You said it was, like, a bunch of friends. Yeah. But, like, you can remember one I mean, chick's name after you think about it for 30 seconds. So yeah, I mean, that's I'm... not making sense to me. Mm. You seem to have blanks in your memory when we get to certain details. But you remember being groped in the blowjob from three years ago. Mm. I find that hard to believe. Okay? This is your one chance to be honest with us. Yes. Once we get up and walk out and we're done, mm -hmm. we're done. Mm, you know, good cop, bad cop. Contact, whether it's groping, blowjobs, vaginal, anal sex, anything, hand jobs. Yes, I'm being vulgar to get a point across. Yeah, no, it's not. None of that. Just as the detectives say, things really aren't adding up. Yet, she's still sticking to her story. Or at least, she was. Before a switch flipped and she said this. What is it? Uh, I might have given him a blowjob in the back part of you. The secret's out, and Charlene has confessed. But this matter is more complex than it may seem. In cases of officer-inmate relations, the main question that arises is the issue of consent. Given that Jason and Charlene knew each other prior to being in prison, it's not wrong to assume that consent went both ways in this interaction. However, in these cases, that's actually completely irrelevant. According to a 2005 report, federal law criminalizes all sexual relations and contact between prison staff and inmates, and that all sexual relations between staff and inmates are considered abuse, even if the act would have been considered consensual if it occurred outside of a prison. This is because of the huge amount of inmate abuse that was observed in prisons. In 1996, it was estimated that between 12 and 14 percent of all prison inmates had been sexually assaulted, and the officers were rarely punished. So to prevent this, a zero-tolerance policy was introduced to try and prevent abuse towards inmates. A policy, it seems, that Charlene completely ignored. I'm not going to sure. ask, but I feel like I know the answer. I'm losing my job. Bitch, you so going to jail! It's not really up to me. Um, in what? Charlene Affairs is aware, investigation is separate from ours because there's, it's, it's two totally different <laughs> you, um, she worried about things. the wrong thing. So, yeah. What kind of charges? Like so, it's it's illegal to have sexual contact with an inmate as an employee. Mm -hmm. So, um, I said the ball kind of be in their court, but I'll let you know as soon as I hear something. Um, I mean, negligent. That's up to the DA's office. As it turns out, Charlene would lose her job, and the only time she'd ever be allowed back in jail would be for the 100 days that she'd be made to serve after being found guilty of sexual activity with a person in custody. Damn. I know y'all seen Orange is, Orange is the New Black. We all seen Orange is the New Black. So, um, you know, like I said earlier, man, I, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't be a, a a CEO for a women's prison because, yeah, I'll fold. I know I'll fold. I wouldn't. Mm -mm. You in there, twenty damn near twenty four seven. You in there all the time. You feel me? From what my boy said, he he quit. He said, "Yo, I had to quit, bro. Like the money was good." But like I felt like I was one of the prisoners. But low key, he I, I know why he, he got scared, bro. 
One of them dudes hit him with that Glock Dookie, man. That, that's what it was. One of them dudes hit him with that Glock Dookie. Because uh, when he originally quit, he was like, bro, like I never had time to myself. I felt like I was in prison. I did that in third. But then, you know, a few years later, he told me exactly what happened. Him and one of the in inmates was going at it. You feel me? I, I guess he came in there on some trying to gain some respect from the inmates. He might have pushed a little too far. And, you know, dude cornered him. Dude cornered him and told him, like, yo, bro, like, I got something for you or whatever. And, you know, hit his ass with that Glock Dookie. Anyway, bro, this that's the video. I'm done.